Hey everyone, welcome back to Display TV. I'm Sarah Priebus, and I just love that question coming in. It's right on time because we're about to give away the answer to question eight in tonight's trivia game. So somebody wanted to know if that referral bonus that you get for inviting your friends applies to trivia earnings, and it does not. So the referral bonus that you get is 10% of whatever that person ends up making on display, but it's only what they end up earning through their posting, not what they're earning through their trivia winnings. That is separate, so just to clarify that. And let's get into some of the trivia, shall we? So this is the very real question eight to tonight's game. I'm gonna ask it to you, and then you are going to reveal the answer. And by reveal, I mean you're gonna try your best to guess it, and then I am going to reveal the answer. So, of course, I've mentioned that we're doing a little traveling next week for a very exciting sport event, and this question has a little bit to do with that. And in fact, you might see a couple extra questions on next week's quizzes related to this very exciting sporting event. So let's get question eight up, see how all of you do. Again, this is for no money. This is just for bragging rights and for you to ultimately have a one up tonight. Which of the following figures would have used eye black during their career? Joel Gray, Eric Dickerson, Elizabeth Arden. Maybe I gave too much of a hint on this one, but hey, this one doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> Which of the following figures would have used eye black during their career? Joel Gray, Eric Dickerson, Elizabeth Arden. Mm. You know, my best smoky eye comes from not removing my makeup the night before. Truly, when I just leave all of that eye makeup on, I go to bed and then I wake up the next morning. That, my friends, is the best smoky eye. I wonder if that has anything to do with eye black. Let's tap that answer. Interesting. Some of us did need some help on this question. Now, 56% of you chose Eric Dickerson, 28% of you chose Elizabeth Arden, and 16% chose Joel Gray. What do you know? The correct answer is Eric Dickerson because He's a football player, friends. He's the only football player on here, and eye black is that little fun black line that you see underneath their eyes sometimes during a game. So Eric Dickerson is your answer to question eight in tonight's game, and like I said, we're gonna have some fun Super Bowl and football themed and Los Angeles themed questions for next week, of course, because we're gearing up for our trip in sunny LA, and of course, the Super Bowl is gonna be there. So. Get ready for that if you wanna do some studying this weekend. I don't know who wants to do that, but that's okay. All right, let's move into Follow Friday before we get to the very real trivia event for $500 that's starting in nine minutes. Okay, Follow Friday this week. I'm super excited to present two creators who are doing a great job here on display and to highlight some of their content. Maybe you get inspired, you wanna follow them. Maybe you just get inspired and you're like, ooh, I could do some posts like that. But let's take a look. Today we're gonna to be talking about Siba77. His bio says Romanian by birth, global citizen by heart, and he's fascinated with learning new languages, quizzes, and traveling. Maybe he's a, a trivia player. So let's take a look at some of his travel flicks. So this is him with his daughter. They're posing, love it. That was a cool little edit that they did. Um, this is in the main square in the city of Brasov in Romania. A lot of travel content on his page, which I love. Look at that architecture, it's really great. Let's take a look at that next photo. We have him again and his little one. This is dating back to the summer of 2017. Love a throwback, exploring the inner yard of the immersive Neum Citadel. Really cool travel content, really great family stuff. And again, he's a lover of quizzes, so fellow trivia person. Let's move along to our next person after Siba 77's last photo here. This is, by the way, at the Balia Lake of Capertheans. Really beautiful, love it. He's also doing a lot of hikes and getting outside, as does our next person that we're featuring tonight. So let's take a look at our next creator. This is a Houston-based breakdancer. This is Anthony Silva. He's got a knack for content creation for sure. Starting off with this photo, like truly what is happening? Like this is not even a handstand, this is a headstand. Look, 
His hands aren't even touching the ground. Oh my gosh, that is incredible strength and balance. I cannot do that. That's a really cool photo. Let's move along to our next one here. This is Anthony, you know, stopping during one of his hikes, one of his nature walks to give display a little peek. He is good with the poses, let me tell you. Between the headstand and this, guy knows how to pose for camera. All right, this is great. These are the three winners at the Playground Championship. It's so nice to see Anthony giving youth opportunities to be active, win some money. We love that. We love mentoring the youth. So great, Beast Boogie. And then we're seeing Anthony on a nature walk. He loves getting outside. Here he is at the mountaintop. This is great exercise. Probably keeps him in shape for all those flips and headstands and everything that he does. And then finally, we got one more photo. This is Anthony collabing with Manscaped to promote their product, which we love because all creators deserve an opportunity to work with brands, make money, and as you know, on display, you, you can earn money just by posting. But we love when creators are getting paid for the time that it takes to make content. And we'd love for all of you to get paid in tonight's game of trivia. So if you're here for that, it's starting in five minutes for 500 bucks. And I just wanna remind all of you one more time, we will not have our pre-show at all next week. Instead, we'll be doing trivia live from Los Angeles. So make sure you're tuning in at 8 p.m. Eastern for those. If you want that free answer that we normally give away during the pre-show, you can tune into the Dolby live stream, which I talked about tonight, that I'll be doing from Display TV's profile. So come on in at around 7.45 p.m. Eastern, that's 15 minutes before trivia, and I'll give away one of the answers if you tune into that live. So I'll see you back here in five for trivia. Bye-bye. Hello, good evening, and welcome, all that good stuff. Insert greeting here. You know the drill. We're here to have fun. We're here to play an all new round of trivia. And most importantly, we're here to get to the bottom of who is eating my yogurt out of the fridge in the studio. I have tried labeling. I have tried hiding them towards the back. I have even tried putting them inside brown paper bags labeled Sarah's do not touch. And yet like clockwork, I go to get them out and they are gone. Look, I really didn't want to start trivia this way, but this is what it's come to. Yogurt Bandit, please just come forward, okay? I won't be mad, only disappointed and hungry. Oh my God, wait, oh my gosh. You know what I'm just realizing? There is a sign on that fridge that says, will be cleaned out every day at the end of the day. Oh my God, wow. Okay, now I feel like the jerk. Will I apologize for falsely accusing my coworkers? <laughs> Look, let's not waste any more time. Now I know to eat my yogurt right away and I wanna make sure you all know what you need for tonight's game. You'll have 10 seconds each to answer 10 questions. Make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi and you're holding your phone vertically so that when a new question pops up on your screen, you can pick the right one. The questions will get harder as we go and make sure to choose carefully because once you tap, there is no going back. Don't worry though, because if you get one wrong, you can still keep playing, just not for the cash. Your winnings will show up in your display bank if, if you're active in the app and have a completed profile. Let's make sure that you are all paying attention. Let's do a quick little practice question, just for funsies. Would you rather, this is easy, no, no right, no wrong answers, just opinionated. Would you rather drop challenge, death drop, new drip? Now I'm not gonna lie, I actually had to look these up to make sure I understood the, the lingo. Drop challenge is uh, a trending thing where you just kind of like drop it low right now to one of Beyonce's songs, at least that's what I understand. Death drop is another kind of dance move. I think they do it on RuPaul's Drag Race. And then new drip, I th I, that one I didn't really have to look up, that one, I, but it, it did feel like we were speaking, speaking a little bit of foreign language, right? All right, so I'm gonna go drop challenge because I actually did that one. I did a video where I was doing the whole drop thing and it looks like 49% of you are with me, which I love. I love when we all choose the same thing. Maybe, maybe we'll all choose the same thing tonight and we'll all win trivia, how about that? I mean, I don't play, but like, that, that's fun, right? If we all win, or no, you want all the money for yourself. Okay, it looks like we're ready to give this a whirl, so let's go, it's time for Display Trivia. Question one, what is the name of the joints on human fingers? Knuckles, buttons, shrimpies. 
What's the name of the joints on human fingers? Knuckles, buttons, shrimpies. Wait, what? You're telling me these things have a name other than the one that I've been calling them for years? Oh my god, you know when that happens? When you like meet someone and you accidentally hear the wrong name and then your brain always only remembers the wrong name? It's like your brain already filed it away and there are no edits allowed. Well, I mean, I thought their name was Bob. I was always saying things like, how goes it, Bob? And how are the kids and Mrs. Bob? And they just went along with it. Well, I'm glad the joints of the fingers and I are finally getting reacquainted. They prefer to go by knuckles. I will try my best to remember that, but I'm sure Bob will slip out every now and again. 94% of you knew that, no problems there. Question two. What is the main setting for the popular drama Grey's Anatomy? College campus, hospital, suburban neighborhood. What is the main setting for the popular drama Grey's Anatomy? College campus, hospital, suburban neighborhood. Now, of course, there are scenes in this show that take place outside of this main location, but the majority of the scenes happen in this particular setting. Like, if my life were a movie, the setting for probably about 90 to 95% of it would be the couch. Ooh, what's going to happen to that cushion? Will Sarah find the keys that may or may not be inside? Tune in next week. The other 5 to 10% of the show, of course, would take place standing in front of the fridge, letting all the cold air out, and then finally just deciding to order takeout. Am, am I crazy, or does this feel like Emmy material? The main setting on Grey's Anatomy was the Seattle Grace Hospital, but is now, after a couple thousand seasons, Gray Sloan Memorial Hospital. Hospital is your answer. 95% of you got that. Let's do Q3. The Berlin Wall historically divided this country into East and West, Germany, Hungary, Austria. The Berlin Wall historically divided this country into East and West, Germany, Hungary, Austria. This wall served as the border between the Soviet Union and the rest of Europe, and I'm happy to say it did eventually fall. What I'm sad to report is that along with this border, all the borders in the nationwide chain of bookstores have too closed and ceased doing business in 2011. And sure, the tearing down of the Berlin Wall garnered a lot more attention and fanfare, but I think it would have been really nice if Ronald Reagan could have shown up at a few demolitions. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that mini mall! The ones that didn't get torn down are now mostly Spirit Halloween stores or Amazon Prime warehouses, but that's just how it goes sometimes, baby. The country divided by the Berlin Wall was Germany, and it has since reunified with Berlin as its capital. 94% of you got that. You are united with question four. Select the type of garment whose name does not come from equestrianism. Stirrup, tube top, halter. Select the type of garment whose name does not come from equestrianism. Stirrup, tube top, halter. Equestrianism. It is an ism, but don't get confused. Most isms tend to be religions or philosophies, but equestrianism isn't any of that. It's just a bunch of people playing around with their tiny, <laughs> they're not tiny, with their little horsies. <laughs> just a bunch of horse girls that grew out of their My Little Ponies. Me, I'm not a girl, not yet a horsewoman. But I always thought it would be so fun to have a horse, so fun. You just get to feed it hay, brush its mane, ride it into town to buy bread, and there's probably nothing else at all to it, right? Sounds like a dream. Real easy. Just kick my feet up. Now uh, these old things, why yes, they're stirrup pants. And this top that ties in the back, a halter. Both names of items used in equestrianism, or as I like to call it, the art of horsing around. 89% of you got that. Question five. The technical term used to describe a soil profile would also be used in what context? Pitching a tent, watching the sunset, sharpening a pencil. The technical term used to describe a soil profile would also be used in what context? Pitching a tent, watching the sunset, sharpening a pencil. Context is key. Oh, I'm not talking about this question. I'm just telling you all about this amazing new locksmith I just found on Yelp. Really great service. Same day turnaround time and a staff with over 50 plus years of combined knowledge. Now that sounds like the key to their success right there. I mean, pfft. Wow, if I didn't know any better myself, I'd say the folks over at Context is Key definitely paid for a spot in tonight's show. But I don't, because I'm just the host who reads whatever gets put into the prompter for me. Bling, blah, bloom, blah. See? Folks, I'm not saying you should head on down to Context is Key even if you don't need a locksmith. That would be crazy. But really, you gotta go. I just signed a real big deal with them, and if it heads south, I'm 
They are a front for the mob. Yes, they are. But the answer to this question is watching a sunset. <sighs> because the profile of a section of soil is the horizon, just like the thing the sun dips below when it falls off our flat earth. 74% of you got that. Question six. The first official cover girl was born in what country? The US, Brazil, Great Britain. The first official cover girl was born in what country? The US, Brazil, Great Britain. We say official cover girl because let's be honest, as long as there have been covers, there have been girls. I'm sure that even Neolithic paintings put their prettiest women on the entrance to the cave. More of the long think pieces and opinion essays are in the back where they belong, sister. This isn't new. Since the dawn of time, humans have used pretty faces to convince people to do what they wanted. How do you think Eve got Adam to eat the apple? Hey, hey, her eyes were up here. But the first spokesmodel for the makeup brand CoverGirl was Jennifer O'Neill in 1963. And although she went on to work in America, she was born to American and Brazilian parents in Brazil. 80% of you got that. Question seven. The type of popular deck chair that was widely used at tuberculosis sanatoria gets its name from a mountain range with what peak? Mount Marcy, Mount Rogers, Graham Mountain. The type of popular deck chair that was widely used as tu at tuberculosis sanatoria gets its name from a mountain range with what peak? Mount Marcy, Mount Rogers, Graham Mountain. A lot to think about there. Sanatoria isn't really a word that we use a lot anymore, but back in the late 1800s, they were all the rage and a great place to send people so they could just relax or, you know, recover from a debilitating d illness for which there was no cure. But to put it nicely, it was basically a spa retreat. Definitely like one of those places the Real Housewives would take a girl's trip to. But instead of talking about so-and-so's botched nose job, it would probably be more along the lines of the latest cholera outbreak or those newfangled steam engines. Ugh. We just can't keep the kids off of Nickelodeon. The times, they are a changing. But one thing that remains the same is our love of Adirondack chairs, which were great for tuberculosis patients because they allowed people to sit up yet still recline outside in the fresh air. Mount Marcy is the only peak here located in that range. And we've almost reached our peak, Desclavey. 70% of you got that one. Ooh, three more left. Question eight. Which of the following figures would have used eye black during their career? Joel Gray, Eric Dickerson, Elizabeth Arden. Which of the following figures would have used eye black during their career? Joel Gray, Eric Dickerson, Elizabeth Arden. I will never understand the Gen Zers and their beauty trends. I mean, I see some of the eye makeup they wear on Euphoria and I'm just like, those girls must find glitter in everything. But eye black? Have we taken the smoky eye too far? I don't want a beauty trend that makes me look like I've been hit in the eye socket. What's next? Temporary tattoos that look like bruises? Bracelets that are just ace bandages? I can see it at Coachella now and it scares me. So as it turns out, eye black isn't actually a makeup technique at all, but the black strips of football players put under their eyes during games, supposedly to cut down on the glare, but I think they just think it makes them look cool. 91% of you got that. Hopefully because you tuned into the pre-show. Question nine. The best-selling author of all time has inspired which of the following films? The Ten Commandments, Ten Things I Hate About You, and Then There Were None. The best-selling author of all time has inspired which of the following films? The Ten Commandments, Ten Things I Hate About You, and Then There Were None. Yes, okay, we got it. <laughs> this person is the best-selling author of all time, but like, what did they sell? What? You can't just assume that because someone is a best-selling author that they sell books. No, uh, they're selling something, and they also just so happen to be an author. We cannot conflate the two. I mean, I might be Sarah Priebus, painter of still lifes in oil, but that's not how I make my money. In fact, that's how I lose my money. I am in a big hole right now with those paintings, so if anyone knows an art dealer who can help me move them, that would be a big relief. Guess I'll keep my day job hostessing at the Red Lobster for now. Oh, right, and trivia, yeah. The best-selling author of all time isn't biblical, and it's also not William Shakespeare, it's murder mystery writer Agatha Christie. Okay, so in this case, she was an author who sold books. It can happen. And 73% of you got that. There's more than none of you left, though, Displaybees. It's time for our final question. Question 10. 
Which of the following limbs of yoga is incorrectly matched to its name in Sanskrit? Pranayama, mindful breathing. Pratyahara, personal ethics. Dharana, concentration. Which of the following limbs of yoga is incorrectly matched to its name in Sanskrit? Pranayama, mindful breathing. Pratyahara, personal ethics. Dharana, concentration. Asana, or postures, is probably the most well-known limb of yoga. Those are the poses that most of us are familiar with. The ones named after birds and inanimate objects, mostly. In fact, I know yoga is like thousands of years old, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But mm, I was thinking maybe we could update some of the pose names a little bit. Like chair pose is now standing desk. Cow pose is now vegan impossible burger pose. Got to cut down on our meat intake. And cat pose is um, most memeable social media content pose. Yoga is an ancient system that supports overall physical, mental, and spiritual health and is a way of living that involves pranayama, or mindful breathing, dharana, or concentration, and pratyahara, or turning inward, not personal ethics. 78% of you got that last one. Woo, let's take a deep breath. Do we need some yoga after that game? How do we do? We made it to the end of another great week. Let's check in. Who won? Shout yourselves out in that chat. Let me know your scores. How are you feeling? Are you, you good or are you a little tense after that one? Some of you made some wins tonight. 299 of you are splitting that pot of $500 to be exact. Shout yourselves out. Be proud. It doesn't matter if you got a 5 out of 10. What matters is that you suited up and that you showed up. Dennis Ultima, thanks for kicking us off. Eight out of 10. Who else have we got? Arquan, one, two, three, got a six out of 10. Gary, so good to see you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy that you've been tuning in. It makes me smile. Riveter, finally a win. So exciting. Luis T ended the week with a 10 out of 10. Uh, Caroline, 10 out of 10. Silex, 711, got a seven. Hey, Lexi, good to see you. Thank you, Lee Art, appreciate that. Capper7, you know what? Sometimes we just, it's been a week. Five out of 10 is still great. Claire Andre, 10 out of 10, bravo. And Sama says 10 out of 10. Niso says 10 out of 10. All right, friends, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end on that note. 10 out of 10, that is a wrap on the first week of February, 2022. Quick reminder, folks, that we won't be doing a free show next week because on Tuesday, we're heading to LA for the Super Bowl. So get some rest. We're so excited to see you next week for Trivia on Display. Good night.